All right, so let's get into the reason that you clicked on this video. But first, I guess I'm a fucking moron for uh, riding the skateboard that I bought because they're going on eBay for $250. So to the person that wrote that comment, thanks, man. So here's the board. It's the Andy Anderson Powell flight deck. Mine looks a little bit different than yours uh, or the ones you've seen on the internet because I spray painted it red. And as a result, I have my most disliked video. <laughs> uh, people did not like that. And I apologize for that, but um, just remember everything's subjective. I didn't like the blue and orange pattern, so I spray painted it red. I purchased it. Uh, you know, I still really like Andy Anderson and I obviously support him. So, um, yeah, I just, just wanted to spray paint it red. So, sorry about that. The wheels and trucks that I have on it right now, it wasn't what I was riding when I rode this board. I turned it into my cruiser board because it's, you know, I can, uh, so it's just my cruiser board now, that's why these are on there. But I rode Indy 169s and um, Spitfire Conical Foles 56 millimeters with this board when I was skating it. The shape is completely different from any board you've ever seen before. It is just all around like one of a kind and I really, really liked it. It was a fun board. The Flight Deck technology is two layers of some sort of, it's carbon fiber, I don't know, and uh, three layers of maple making it a five ply board. And most skateboards are seven plies. So this one is five, making it a little bit thinner, a little bit lighter. The shape and the dimensions specifically. The board is a 913 by 32.8. It has a 15 inch wheelbase and 6.8 twin tip uh, kicks. The deck shape is 290 and the concave is K21. This board has a lot of concave and relatively flat kicks. That was pretty interesting feeling. I like a lot of concave, um, but I do like steeper kicks. Uh, but the good thing about this board was that you didn't really get any ghost pop because the kicks were a little bit mellower. So that was cool. The board felt really interesting for the first like three to four sessions and then you get used to it. It's definitely bigger. It's definitely, uh, you know, it has that weird shape to it. So there's a bit of a learning curve, but overall it's a skateboard. You get used to it. For me personally, I don't have an issue with changing my board size. So a lot of people I know, they're like, I read eights and I could never ride an eight five, it's huge. For me, it's not like that at all. But I'm also a little bit bigger. I'm six foot five, 220 pounds. So for me, this board is actually perfect. It's a pretty good board overall for all sorts of skateboarding. Whatever skateboarding you want to do, you can do it on this board. Where I saw it shine the most was probably in transition. That's where I thought it was the most fun for me personally because it was so stable and so big. You had so much room to put your foot and if you went into a grind or your foot moved around at all, you know, it was so big that it wasn't that big of a deal. The pop. There it is, the pop, unexpectedly. Okay, so the flight deck construction, and because of the carbon fiber, that is what makes this board so poppy. It was super poppy from the moment I set it up till the day I retired it, till now, probably a hundred years from now, it will still have the same pop. You could run over it with a car and it will still have the same amount of pop. Extremely poppy, never lost its pop. Feels like a fresh board every time you do a trick. And that's what's really cool about the flight deck stuff, about the carbon fiber boards in general. It felt a little bit stiff, but then it loosened up. So a lot of boards have some give to them, wooden boards. Flex from here. Want some flex. I'm 200. Yeah. Big dog. Hoo -hoo. That's a pretty big dog. This one didn't really. It, at first, now it does, but at first it, it didn't. But And that's kind of weird, but um, you get used to it, you know? If you're a human, you adapt, you get used to stuff. So it's not that big of a deal. Okay, so what I thought personally about it, I thought it was a really fun board. It did its job completely. Um, it totally, you know, it did everything I expected it to do and more. Uh, it gave me a lot of confidence because uh, I knew I wasn't gonna snap it. I knew I wasn't gonna get pressure cracks. It wasn't gonna get soggy. I'm a bigger dude, so usually I would have to bring two boards. If I'm riding a wooden board, I like to bring two to every session. Just in case I snap one, I can not ruin my session. I can keep skating on the other one. So with this, I didn't have to do that. I knew that I had one board and it's fine. No big deal. Uh, I wouldn't snap it. You know, it, it, 
it's fine. The other thing I really liked about it was how much confidence I had on the board because there's so much room to land on it. And that was especially with the tail. That was like my favorite thing about this board was how big this tail is. This tail is like absolutely ginormous. It has the wing tips here. It has this huge tail, block tail. For me personally, it just was so fun in that aspect because I could move my foot around. If my foot were to fall off a little bit, it would go right back onto some part of that giant tail and you didn't have to worry about it. So that was huge for me. I really liked the tail. For those of you that snowboard, um, if I were to give it like a board rating, it's it's an all mountain board. It's, it's an all terrain board. It really is like a Swiss army knife. You can do anything on it from flat ground all the way to transition. I bet you could hit the mega ramp on it. Like it's, it's a really, really good board for everything. And um, it, it has a few negative qualities, I would say, for certain stuff, certain things, but overall, it's a really good skateboard. The negative things that I would say about it, the cons about this board, uh, it has some issues that I haven't faced in skateboarding really, which um, there was a delamination. Uh, so the top layer of the board is carbon fiber. You can see it right there, it's that black layer right near the grip tape, it's like right here. That, um, that chipped up because it's the top layer of the skateboard. The third session I rode it. It was sliding down the ramp at my skate park and it hit the sheet metal and it chipped up. And for me, that's a huge bummer, you know? I, for anybody, it's a huge bummer to see a board that you just spent like $80 on chip up. Um, but because it has the flight deck technology. It doesn't chip and then go over, it chips and stays in place. So all you had to do is glue it and clamp it and then 24 hours later, it's fine. And then going off of that, it's like a normal board in the fact that you're gonna get chipping, you're gonna get, you know, it's gonna get chewed up, especially where I skate. It's just like any normal board, you know. It does chip and whatnot. It's not completely invincible. So I'm from Illinois and in the Midwest, our skate parks are extremely uh, rough. So the, our boards get chewed up quite a bit. So these, the wingtip area I noticed and just like anywhere really where it landed primo, it would get chewed up pretty bad, but you're gonna find that with anything. The negative of a flight deck, and it's just something you have to be aware of, with any carbon fiber board is when a board does chip up and then you grab it, you're gonna get carbon fiber splinters. I literally just got one. <laughs> so like, it happens, but it's not the end of the world and you're not gonna die. The number one complaint and the biggest negative of this board would be the razor tail. So the razor tail was really bad. With these boards, they don't break. So you have to really pick when you're gonna choose a new board. For me, it was when the razor tail started uh, cutting my legs open. Every time I hit my leg or my shin, I'd start bleeding. Um, that was when I kind of had to call it quits with it. Um, I did sand it down and that helped out a little bit for a couple of sessions. But overall, because it's such a thinner board and only has five plies, it does razor tail rather quickly. However, the board did last me about four months. That in itself is, is pretty, pretty freaking huge. Also, it doesn't get any pressure cracks. When a wooden board gets pressure cracks, like it didn't break, but it gets really soggy. This board never got soggy. It still has loads of pop. Like I could set it up right now and it'd be fine. I might need to change out the grip tape, but it's still fine. And then the last and final little complaint, which isn't like, it's just specific to this shape, would be the fact that it's a little bit harder to do certain tricks. Like in a game of skate, I like to do nollie pressure flips and you can put your toe right here and flick it down with a normal board. But with a normal board, the um, like a popsicle shaped board, it sort of goes up and around. And with this, it just is a hard slant. And because of that, it did make it harder to do those tricks. Um, overall though, this board shined in all areas of skateboarding because 
it's not a transition board and it's not just a popsicle shaped board it's somewhere in between with a transition shaped board you usually have like a relatively square tail and a shovel nose and those are pretty hard to skate in the street you know you're not really gonna want to go kick flip down some stairs in that um, or skate a ledge with that. This has a smaller nose, but the nose is still pretty huge. It's just smaller than the ginormous tail that is on the board. Overall, I'm gonna give this board an eight and a half out of 10. I quite honestly, I don't know what a 10 would be. <laughs> I have no clue, but uh, it's a really good board. I would really recommend it. I would love to skate another one, but they're really hard to find and they're pretty expensive now, so. So here's my question for you guys. Carbon fiber boards coming out. Santa Cruz has the VX and Joy has their Everlast or whatever. All these board companies are coming out with all sorts of new deck technology and it costs a little bit more than your average board. What do you guys think about spending that extra $20, $30 on a skateboard that'll last you a little bit longer? Would you rather get two wooden boards or one carbon fiber board? Let me know in the comments below. I have a wide variety of videos on YouTube. If you like this one, please go check out my other ones. And I have a bunch of cool stuff coming in the future, but you're never gonna see that if you don't subscribe because the internet's huge, man. I mean, come on. I made my bed for this. Hit that sub button, baby. Help a brother out. I got some cool stuff coming out. I upload pretty frequently. Anyway, thanks for watching this one. Hope you enjoyed it. And yeah, see you next time. Hopefully.